Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Mike. I'd like to give you a little bit of an update on some of the things I've been picking up lately, including uh, what I got so far from the Barnes & Noble Criterion Collection Half Price Sale. Now everybody, everybody's making videos about what they're picking up at this sale, uh, which is cool. A lot of people are very excited about it, and I am too. I went on the first day and picked up five items, have not been back since, although I might go, I might go tonight if I can get there before it closes. So let me show you, start out by showing you what I, the, the two films that I've seen. Um, before the sale, I had never seen any of these five movies, but I, I have watched two of them. So here's the first one from 1955, All That Heaven Allows, directed by Douglas Sirk, starring Jane Wyman, Rock Hudson, Agnes Moorhead. Um, wow, I've heard a lot about this over the years, and it's, it's a beautiful film. The cinematography, the design is absolutely gorgeous. Now. Douglas Sirk is a very famous director. A lot of people are big fans of his work. I, I realized after I watched this that I've only seen one other Douglas Sirk film in my entire life, and that is the 1959 remake of Imitation of Life, which is a, a big favorite of mine. And um, so I need to learn more about Douglas Sirk. Very, very good movie. Highly recommended. Okay, next, the, whoop, the next film that I picked up that I actually have watched so far is Dressed to Kill. This is a DVD copy, uh, directed by Brian De Palma, 1980. Michael Caine, um, yeah, Michael Caine, Angie Dickinson, Nancy Allen. Heard a lot about this over the years, and and I don't know. I was always kind of avoided it because I was afraid it was going to be a big bloody mess. But um, I loved it, man. I really got into this. Now a lot of people have been talking about some of the Criterion Collection of thrillers lately, and that's what gave me the idea to get this. And give it a chance. Really enjoy this. Um, don't know what else to say. Uh, I will watch this again. And this has two discs. Of course, if it was, if it was a Blu-ray, they would just have one disc. But uh, so I need to go through all the extra features. I haven't done that yet. But I watched this last night. It's really a cool film. Very good thriller. Now the other three that I haven't watched yet are. From, uh, let's see, this is Preston Sturgis, right? Palm Beach Story. You know, did I get the right director? Preston Sturgis, right? I'd be really embarrassed if it wasn't. Yeah, Preston Sturgis, uh, Claudia Colbert, Joel McRae, and uh, can't believe that I never got around to seeing this over the years since it's a, a nice Golden Age movie, but uh, yeah, I'm very curious about it, so I'm, I'm very happy to get a copy. Uh, I also picked up this film called The Parallax View, starring Warren Beatty. Now, um, a lot of people have been talking about this lately, too. I, one of the main reasons I picked this up, I took a Warren Beatty film class about five or six years ago, and this is the only one that I didn't see because I, I think I was sick that night. I couldn't make it to the class. So I've always kind of felt left out that I didn't uh, complete the class by seeing this. But uh, So I'm very interested in this. Alan J. Pakula was the director. Also, who was that? Who else is in it? Um, Paula Prentice is in it. All right. So, anyway, Parallax View. And the last criterion that I've picked up so far is a French film by Alan René. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hiroshima Mon Amour, which uh, I've heard many good things about. The reason I picked this up is because I, I recently picked up another film by René called Last Year at Marienbad, which was part of the uh, Kino Lorber collection. And uh, I had always heard really negative things about this. And I, I wanted to see see it for myself, even though a lot of people had said uh, bad stuff about it. I was curious. And I absolutely fell in love with it. So I'm hoping that I will enjoy this every bit as much. All right? So we shall see. Uh, some of the other things I picked up recently, my friend 4K Frank did a video last week, I think. He talked about going to Best Buy to uh, pick up some steelbooks and other things. And it made me realize after watching his video that I never, ever shop at Best Buy. I used to go there all the time, but it's been a long time since I've even been in the store. So I, I decided to go there and see what they had available. And I picked up uh, three items. One is I finally got around to buying a copy of Titanic which I've only seen once, and I I can't remember now if I saw this in the theater when it first came out 
or if I saw it uh, as a rental shortly after it came on home video. I really don't remember. But I do remember liking the film very much. It's a, it's a great classic, so uh, looking forward to watching it again. Titanic. And it was on sale for, I think, 7 bucks or something like that. So, all right. Uh, I also picked up a steelbook, just for the hell of it, of uh, this 1980s science fiction movie that I've never seen called Battle Beyond the Stars. Battle Beyond the Stars, uh, produced by Roger Corman. And uh, it's, it's kind of a nice little steelbook. I'm not a big collector of steel books, but every once in a while I do pick something up, and they are kind of cool to have. This this stars people like uh, let's see Richard Thomas, let's see Richard Thomas, uh, George Papard, Robert Vaughn, John Saxon, Sybil Danning, and it's it's been described as a mag the Magnificent Seven in outer space. So that's kind of intriguing, don't you think? So. Uh, Battle Beyond the Stars. And the, the other thing I picked up is a film that I've seen seen mentioned somewhere. Maybe, I, think I've, I think I saw the trailer on YouTube, but didn't know anything else about it. It's a film called Flashback. This is on Blu-ray as well. It has people I never heard of like Dylan O'Brien, Hannah Gross, Emery Cohen, Keir Gilchrist. Anyway, it, it, it's a psychological thriller, and uh, I have kind of mixed feelings about it. It was a very interesting film, very engrossing even though it did make a lot of logical sense. And I guess it doesn't always have to make sense in order to be enjoyable. But it is something that I will probably watch again, just to see if I can figure it all out. It's, it, it looks, it's trying to make itself, well, the guy looked like he was trying to make a, a serious art film, and uh, I'm not sure if he succeeded on that score, but it's kind of cool. I liked it. Flashback. And I uh, got a few things in the mail today from oldies.com, so I haven't gotten into watching those yet. The first one is, I decided to upgrade one of my top ten favorite movies of all time, which is The Bat from 1959. Uh, Vincent Price, Agnes Moorhead, and the only copy I've had for years is um, a, not a terrific uh, image from oldies.com uh, alpha video, but it's certainly been watchable, and I've, I've watched this film so many times, and I will watch it again and again, so it'll be, it'll be kind of fun to have it in pristine condition. This is from... The Film Detective Restored Classics. Never heard of them, so we shall see. And I uh, decided to continue my research of the, the career of Ethan Hawke, Ethan Hawke, my, my new favorite actor. So I picked up three films, one of which I've seen before. I saw this years ago, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. And this has people like uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Ethan Hawke, Marisa Tomei, and Albert Finney. Saw this at the theater, uh, when it, when it first came out, don't remember a lot about it, but I remember thinking it was a great movie, so decided to pick up a copy. I also picked up this, something I don't know anything about, called Predestination, which is probably another psychological thriller like, like Flashback. Uh, Sarah Snook, Noah Taylor, who are they? I have no idea. So, anyway, it says on the cover, to save the future, he must protect his past. Yeah, okay. Got it. We shall see. And here's another film that was on sale. I decided to pick it up. It's called The Jimmy Show. Don't know anything about this, but Ethan Hawke is a supporting player in this. Frank Whaley, who I never heard of. Carla uh, Gugino. Never heard of her either. But it's about some guy who does uh, stand-up comedy or something and his life goes to hell. And I'm not sure what this is going to be about. So, anyway. So, Ethan is in support. And that's pretty much all I have to show you right now. Um, let me know if you've seen any of these Criterion films or any of the other films that I showed you. And uh, comments are welcome. Thanks for watching, folks.